Should AAA games even exist in 2023? When we live in a climate where studios are closing, publishers are complaining all the time that the cost of making games compared to how much money they bring in isn't a big enough gap. We saw recently that the Saints Row developer, after their reboot, closed, they're done. The Callisto Protocol was an ambitious AAA game for the survival horror genre. Apparently hasn't even made bank, hasn't even made its profits back. The main guy who was the director of that has left the studio and we keep hearing of more and more examples of studios closing, not doing well, and of course the continuous push that video games cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make and yet the price of games have remained exactly the same. How can we justify not lifting the price? And following that train of thought, does that mean we're done with triple A? Is it time to go to double A? Is it time to take a step back for the health of the industry? I'm going to talk about that and more now. Um, hey, my name's George. Welcome to Gaming My Whole Life. While you do remember, please hit like on the video if you enjoy a YouTuber who's going to do very interesting conversations. Either I'm hyping a product, hyping a game, or randomly I think about these deep conversation sort of videos. And even though they don't do well as far as the algorithm is concerned, screw it. I'm going to do it anyway. So if you appreciate my drive, please subscribe. It really helps the channel overall. And I do apologize if I'm talking with... um. Not as much energy, there might be pauses between my words. I am still getting over a cold. I'm feeling very unproductive, so I wanted to do this. But rest assured though, right, just because I'm not feeling well doesn't mean that this isn't a smexy as if video, right? I did a lot of research into the cost of some of the most popular um, video games that have come out, you know, the triple A budget compared to how much money they brought in and so forth. So then we can realistically decide, hey, is it time for us to step away from triple a or is the money that we get these days more than enough right and publishers just being publishers and being greedy so let's go over some numbers let's have a let's, let's have a lot of bit of fun right so let's let's start with the doom and gloom first before i change that so firstly what is triple a right let's let's go on the same thing triple a for the most part is widely seen as something with a huge budget you know a lot of money has been put in there maybe hundreds of millions of dollars maybe it's a sequel to a well-known franchise maybe it's an exclusive basically everyone knows about it right like the callisto protocol that was a triple a game you know photorealistic graphics really pushing things every time a resident evil game comes out right from capcom that is considered triple a you know resident evil 8 resident evil 4 remake resident evil 3 remake resident evil 2 remake um, all of their games, right? Street Fighter, these are triple A games. Whenever Nintendo releases something, you know, when they released Zelda Tears of the Kingdom recently, any of the um, Nintendo IPs and so forth, triple A. When Halo came out for the Xbox, finally, that was considered triple A. But if these things cost hundreds of millions of dollars just to make, right? And then the budget pretty much doubles when you get marketing costs involved, surely, Maybe it's time to step back, right? Because my last video before this one, which I'm um, thank you to my many new subscribers, by the way, my last video before this one was talking about the fact that Capcom had the nerve to say that they don't charge enough money for their games. And when you consider how much games cost now compared to the 80s, yes, that's how far back he had to jump. <laughs> When we compare the prices of you know how much games cost in the 80s and the fact that we're charging basically the same amount of money and then hundreds of millions of dollars later we're still charging the same amount he's thinking maybe it's time to raise the price now long story short um i debunked that something stupid not the case they make more than enough money but for this though right for triple a to double a <clears throat> Let's discuss some fun numbers right and uh, you will see for yourself that it isn't an opinion triple a is fine and healthy however towards the end of the video so do please stick around towards the end of the video i want to talk about the fact that hey there's actually a really cool market for double a production over triple a and i would love to see that come up and i'll use some really good examples but let, let, let's bring up some numbers that i brought up right so resident evil 8 resident evil village right reportedly and keep in mind this is just a result of google searching and looking at all these different forums and this and that and estimates i might be wrong in a couple areas you know give me some leniency i try to do as much research as possible 
But apparently Resident Evil 8 costs less than 110 million to make. That's um, all these prices are in USD, by the way. I decide that's going to be like the ultimate middleman because most of us know how our currency weighs up um, to the Americans if you're not an American yourself. I'm obviously from Australia. I know how to convert that in my head. So $110 for Resident Evil 8 to make. Um, I'm not sure if that includes marketing and so forth, right? So let's round it up to $150, whatever, right? Lots of money. We are talking like... 100 million plus for a game it's like all right so that game has sold um more than 8 million units right so then what i did is i grabbed the base price for usd so that game launched at 60 usd as capcom is a third party publisher whether they release their whether they release resident evil 8 on the playstation on the xbox on pc with steam and digital stores and so forth what I saw online is that roughly a 30% cut is taken, right? Whatever profit they make, 30% minimum is uh, taken. However, Capcom being so big, maybe they can negotiate differently, right? Now, if you grab the 60 USD multiplied by the 8 million units, you get 336 million units. Sorry, th 336 million just from the base price, right? So let me put this simple. 110, 110 million to make just from the base assuming everyone bought the cheapest version of the game at launch it would be 336 million so we're already a couple hundred million forward even taking in consideration a 30 percent cut that um you know all the digital storefronts would take but that's just from the base right that doesn't include the fact that Resident Evil 8 had $56 worth of microtransactions on its own. It doesn't take into consideration that at the launch of the game, there was a gold edition of the game and another version as well, which fluctuated the price from 60 USD at launch from anywhere to 70 to 100 USD, right? Or, or 110. So we're talking some insane numbers. Now, in 2022, 95% of Capcom sales uh, were all digital, which means they only paid for 5% of physical games and so forth, which we all know cost extra money. But that's just a very quick illustration on like one game, right? And yes, you can make the argument that not everyone bought it day one. A lot of people waited for sales and so forth. That is true. But as I said, that's like the base minimum because hey, if only 20% of the people who bought this game decide to buy the ultimate version, right? The, the biggest one, then instead of 60, they paid 100 and so forth. So hundreds of millions of dollars. But move on, let's move on past that, right? Let's move on past that. I'm not going to just stick it to, um, to Capcom. Hogwarts Legacy development costs $150 million, right? Big chunk of money. Let's chuck on an extra 50 million for marketing. Why not, right? Why not? Hogwarts Legacy has sold 15 million units. It's been reported that it has gotten a billion dollars in revenue. Let's go to a Sony exclusive, right? Ghost of Tsushima, 60 million dollars to develop, 60 million. Sales are about 10 million dollars. That's a uh, 600 million dollar <clears throat> amount that they've brought in yes not everyone bought it at the 60 dollar launch price but there's a lot of things to keep in mind here right these are just ballpark figures that even if something costs 60 million dollars to make if you sell 10 million copies that's 600 million dollars and this is a first party game you know what that means that means that the ghost of Tsushima publisher who is sony didn't have to pay 30% cut to Sony. So that means every single dollar that they made was clear to them, right? And even if we halved this, right? Let's pretend everyone bought Ghost of Tsushima on a budget at half price, which is not true. But let me play devil's advocate just to really illustrate just how much money AAA makes, right? Let's pretend no one bought the darn thing <laughs> when it launched, which we know is a lie, everyone bought it. Let's pretend everyone only paid 30 bucks. All right, that means that 600 million becomes 300 million. 60 million was the development cost, 300 million profit, and that's me randomly halving it for no reason, could have easily made up to 600 million. 
The last two Spider-Man games that have come out, right? So the one that came out, Miles Morales, that came out on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 and PC, right? All up in total has gotten 33 million units. And this isn't just AAA games that do the photorealistic graphics that get insane numbers. Zelda Breath of the Wild for Nintendo, between the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. 32 million single-handedly Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I dare say it's actually, it's earned those numbers. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, that's only just come out in the last few months or whatever. 18.5 million already. Super Mario Odyssey, which is just a fun 3D platformer. 26 million. Now, why am I chucking all these numbers, right? Why am I chucking around all these numbers all these huge development budgets and this and that. Pretty much every single game I've even referred to here costs hundreds of millions of dollars to get off the ground. Well, there's a few things not spoken about with AAA development, right? And that is actually the greed, right? The greed aspect of it all. And that is, we should not be given sympathy to AAA developers saying, oh, they need more money from us. We need to help them. They are investing hundreds of millions of dollars into development because they get hundreds of millions of dollars more. It's a payoff. So many games that I've looked into, all of these um, exclusives, all these AAA games and all that, hundreds of millions of dollars after development costs, right? It isn't hundreds of millions of dollars gets absorbed into development. No, no, no. I'm saying that all of these AAA games, the vast, vast majority, any AAA game that is actually successful, get so much freaking money back with $100 million to develop it, if it even reaches that amount. Often it's actually a lot less, but they pay too much for marketing and so forth. Even with those costs, they get hundreds of millions of dollars more. So AAA itself, whether it's Sony, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Nintendo, they're getting their hundreds of millions of dollars more. And that is why each one of these companies are worth billions instead of millions, right? Like it's a very different game. And yes, yes, sometimes things fail. You know, let's look at Saints, the Saints Row reboot, right? That's what um, initially caused the discussion recently. Everyone's like, oh, that's a triple A game. It didn't go well and uh, the development studio shut down. That is further evidence that we need to take a step back and we need to give more money to publishers and this and that. And this is what happens, right? We're all demanding for AAA development, you know, games like the Callisto Protocol, games like Protocol, games like the Saints Row Reboot and others. Some are going to fail, studios are going to shut down, jobs are going to be lost. It's a very doom and gloom. No. No, I don't buy that for a second because everything can be explained, right? Firstly, the Callisto Protocol. I loved it. I'm playing it downstairs on my PlayStation 5, right? We all know that game launched with performance issues and with bugs and so forth, right? I bought the game much later after the fact just because I literally didn't have the money to buy it straight away, right? So I bought it after all the patches were done and so forth. That game won't stop crashing on me for the life of me. It has taken me so long to progress because I keep having problems. Also, it's a brand new IP. If you put too much money into something and you don't get those definite sales back, yeah, yeah, triple A development is still risky. Double A development is still risky. Making an indie game is still risky, right? If you put more into the cost of making something than you get back, yes, that risk still exists. Just because some AAA games do fail, it doesn't mean that all the other hyper successful AAA developers like Nintendo, like Sony, like Capcom and this and that, right? Doesn't mean they all suddenly need more money, right? Although Nintendo, I give them a pass because they're already 30 to $40 cheaper than the competition. And that was before the price hike, right? I was looking at Spider-Man 2 to buy from EB Games and $125. I bought Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, a game that was in development for six years for $70. You know what's fun though? You know what's fun? So look, we've already established Triple A is fine. They get hundreds of millions of dollars of profit on top. As long as they don't screw up the game, there has been no game in the Triple A world that came out that was in a good state, was a complete game, which didn't cause outrage within the community, that failed financially. The only Triple A games that fail are games that are flops. Of course they're going to fail, but any game well received is always a success and also 
to give a little bit of to put a little bit of dirt on um sony as well right because they're the ones who did the price increase if you sell a game on steam or another console you need to pay it's roughly a 30 percent cut right so you make a hundred dollars you act and you give thirty dollars to the holder of the platform so if you're a third-party developer you release a game on sony's platform they're going to take a 30 percent cut roughly same deal if you're on steam and so forth now if you are sony though and you invest all these hundreds of millions of dollars into development of these games. Firstly, that's an automatic 30% discount. You, you're, not, you're not paying yourself for the privilege of being on your own store, right? So that lowers how much money you need to make to make a profit. Also, these AAA games move entire um, consoles, right? You think the PlayStation 4 would have had more than 100 million units sold if it wasn't flooded with all these must-have um exclusive games no the spider-man the god of war the days gone the last of us the ghost of tushima all of these exclusives push people to buy the consoles right that sony absolutely profited from so what do 100 million plus people who have bought, bought your console and you invested your triple a development into these games which have already proven just the game sales themselves give them more than enough money back but to just to push it even further when 100 million people buy your console, let's say 40% of them, 30, I'll be generous. Let's say 30% of them want to use online. Well, they're all going to have to get the overpriced PS Plus subscription model now, aren't they? You're going to get more than $100 a year just from that because everyone's going to want to use online, right? So, so it isn't just how much money and how many millions of units did Ghost of Tsushima sell? It's like, no, no. Firstly, Ghost of Tsushima sold so many millions of copies that it easily dwarfed the development cost. But also, Ghost of Tsushima would have directly resulted in a lot of people buying a PlayStation 4 in the first place. I actually believe I was one of them. Also, a lot of those people are going to want to pay for online access. And also, because Sony is the console manufacturer and they are the big boys, Every single game anyone buys on their console, Sony gets that 30% cut. So what does that mean? So that means the revenue that Sony is still getting from these AAA games that everyone's thinking they're not getting enough money, they're getting it back in spades because let's say the average PlayStation 4 owner, PlayStation 5 owner buys at least 10 games, right? They have at least 10 games to their name and normally more, it's like more like 10 to 15. Let's say at least 10 games, right? At least 10 games each. Sony has taken a 30% cut on every single one of them, right? Like there's huge revenue streams and pools and so forth. And also don't think that Sony won't repackage and resell their own games later on, right? PlayStation 5, separate PlayStation 5 version of games can do and will appear and so forth. When the PlayStation 6 comes out, you think there won't be Ghost of Tsushima with some slightly enhanced graphics on sale there again? You think there won't be a, another Spider-Man bundle? You think there won't be another God of War? They keep reselling these things. AAA is so healthy. What would be a fun idea, right? I'm officially from this point onwards no longer going to even try to justify it. AAA makes so much... AAA gaming makes so much money that there's no need for it to go anywhere, right? Publishers greedily want hundreds of millions of dollars profit, which is fine. That's that's their thing. Um, but let's not pretend that we're struggling and they're doing us a favor. They don't need to raise the price of games, even though they already have, for incomplete paywall games filled with microtransactions. No, thank you. Right? Those who do good by the consumer get rewarded. You know, that's why Sony, at least as far as their first party games go, and Nintendo are uh, critically received and acclaimed right because you get full complete games in good conditions not buggy not paywood not whatever day one nintendo more so when zelda tears of the kingdom recently came out you want to know why it sold 18.5 million copies already even though it hasn't been out that long it isn't just because there's a zelda game there it's because it's a complete product there was no zelda tears of the kingdom gold edition ultimate edition and then paywall and then microtransactions like no it's just a complete product and when your fan base respects you they will literally throw all the money in the world at you right 
Trying to nickel and dime an extra $10 off people saying AAA development is too hard? Not good enough. But what I would like to see, which I think would be really fun, right? And I'm gonna go to Capcom again, just cause I think they're a cool company, but they're just serving as a really good example. Capcom has a lot of IPs under their belt, right? They have the Resident Evil series, they have Mega Man, they have Dino Crisis. Yes, I'm gonna keep bringing that up. <clears throat> they have a lot of games, right? And also they've changed a lot of games. Like Res the Resident Evil remake games are nothing like the Resident Evil games of old. You know, they don't have the fixed camera angles anymore, which I miss and love. They don't have the pre-rendered um, backgrounds anymore, which that would be amazing because pre-rendered graphics with today's computer graphic would actually look photorealistic. Not just good, you won't be able to tell um, the difference between fiction and reality. That's how much a pre-rendered image can look good. Trust it from someone who one, has common sense, but two, I did 3D development and all that. I know what is possible. But what would be great to see from Capcom is some double A games. Bring me back Dino Crisis. Bring me back a modern Dino Crisis, redo Dino Crisis 1, redo Dino Crisis 2 with a double A um, budget and do that as well for old school Resident Evil games as well, right? I'd love to see some old school Resident Evil types with the fixed camera angles, with the pre-rendered backgrounds and all that, right? Smaller budgets and so forth. And yeah, maybe you won't make, um, you know, $300 million profit. Maybe you won't make that much. Maybe you only make a hundred million dollars profit. Oh my goodness. It feels wrong to say only a hundred million dollars, but that's the world we live in, right? There are definitely low key investments which will profit companies massively if they brought it back, you know? Um, my most popular video on this channel to this date are my Tenchu videos. A uh, shout out to the many, many subscribers I have who are old Tenchu fans like me and really enjoy my PlayStation 1 retrospectives. I appreciate every single one of you, right? There are so many games that the IPs are owned by someone. And if they brought it back to today with not even AAA graphics, not even AAA budgets, but what if they brought us back Soul Reaver, AA production values? What if they brought us back Tenchu? double A production values. They don't have to do triple A if it's such a scary thing for them. They can easily do double A and they can easily roll in the money. I guarantee the amount of old IPs that fans are waiting for a return from Capcom. If Capcom put half the investment in them and just gave fans what they want as well. See, that, that, that's the other thing, right? That's the other thing which is just silly is the triple a publishers will spend all this money on new games and continuously change the playstyle and the direction of the game and then freak out if fans don't like it even though during the development process they knew fans probably wouldn't like it should triple a games even exist in 2023 absolutely the money is there the hundreds of millions of dollars profit is there so no no sympathy towards um publishers all wanting to raise the price of games that is price gorge and that is disrespectful and not needed but i wouldn't be opposed to some of these triple a developers making some double a games you know like nintendo's still working on metro prime 4 and that's obviously you know a big triple a thing hey if you guys wanted to instead just do a double a metro prime 4 and actually release the game sometime within our lifetime that would be cool. <laughs> anyway, God bless you all. Take care. I'll see you next time.